No one deserves to be kidnapped. No one deserves to be murdered. No one deserves to be burned. No one deserves to be dumped in a dumpster. And so if people are attempting to say what type of business person he was, in America, bad business people go to the judicial system, either housing court or other courts. They don't go to the mall. And that's it. So I don't want to have to justify murder. The people who took this life must be found and prosecuted to the full extent of American judicial system. That's what I want to do. There is no justifiable means of taking the life of an individual in America. And that's why we are here today. We're here today to ask the New York Post to immediately print an apology, not only to Brooklynites, but to the eight children that are left without a dad, to the wife who's left without a husband. That is who the apology should go to. For children to wake up and see something like this, their family member on the front pages of a paper asking the question, who didn't want him dead? We need to straighten that question mark into an exclamation point and say, no Brooklynite, no New Yorker, no American want him dead. We have to ask our journalists to work with more responsibility, to provide information to our communities that will empower them, that will inspire them. I don't feel that the people that are writing this and are putting this out, this is something that you can't show to your children or your grandchildren of something that you are proud of, that you participated and that you contributed to the dynamic and the intellectual brain trust of journalism today. Does we have faults. We all have faults. Does anybody with faults deserve this kind of treatment? I say not. And I think the people of the city, not only our community, who loved and respected this man, who donated to charity, to who failed not to give whenever he was asked to give. I don't think that this is equity, or fairness, or freedom. And the New York Post should be ashamed of themselves. This is outrageous and unacceptable. The press should be assisting in finding the killer and not disgracing this person, his family, and his community. Where are the journalists trying to find out who is responsible for those responsible for this gruesome act? I respect freedom of the press, but where is the responsibility? As someone went to just mentioned, we are disgusted, we're outraged, and we are appalled that the New York Post would dare celebrate, celebrate on their front page the murder of an innocent New Yorker. That is despicable. Even Osama bin Laden, when he made the front page of the New York Post, he, a terrorist who killed thousands of our citizens, got better treatment than a businessman, than a father, than a community leader. And that is why we are so outraged here today. I call on the Anti-Defamation League to protest this malicious libel. That organization was founded after just this kind of journalism led to the lynching of Leo Frank in Atlanta, Georgia, a century ago. And I call upon all communities to condone, to condemn such actions and not to condone it like the New York Post. We're all together here as one, united, and that is the way we should all be as New Yorkers. Thank you.
So yesterday, the New York Post said that they should abolish the Office of Public Advocate. Well, let me tell you why today we need a public advocate. Because today, the New York Post reached an all-time low. Today, you've given license to murder. Today, you have condemned someone without the facts. Today, you minimized and made insignificant life. I know nothing about this gentleman, but I know that he lived, he was a human person, a human being. And clearly, no one should act as judge and jury. from the New York Post. And everyone should condemn the New York Post. And to the New York Post, thank you for reminding me why we need a New York City public act. that the New York Post must apologize to the family and to the community and to apologize uh, to everyone for what they have done here. They have done great damage out of malice and greed and they need to get right. It is not enough an apology. We have seen in the newspaper numerous times how they present our community. We want to see not a one-time apology admitting the error and, and damage they have done to the entire city. We want to see their future action. Let them come to our communities and to the other ethnic communities and glorify the noble acts that are committed on a daily basis to the homeless, to the people who need doctors, to the people who need food, the food pantries, and let me see if they will cover that as well. This is what we do. I was with many community leaders when we went to break the news for the family. And when we saw this little child crying, Nobody who has a human being heart has the decency to write what they wrote on the front papers. So I suggest for these reporters, think about these little child. Think about the eight children that mourning a father, a respected person in the community, a person who every day, I had many people came up the last 24 hours and said they were personally held by him with loans and anything else just to make a better place to live in New York. Chutzpah is not the word, really not the word, but the New York Post should be ashamed of themselves by the I, I would like to ask every store in every community, not only the Jewish community, she should take this thing and they shouldn't even sell it. The advertisement should go away. Apology is not the word when you have eight little children in a home crying with Tati and watch the incident that they took the body to Long Island in the dumpster. Now inside, in the article, the headline is gone but not forgiven. What will not be forgiven is this front page. Oh, it's so <laughs> we are already seeing the fruits of this front page. Let me read to you what I saw on the internet, Twitters, blogs, and whatnot. One, quote, Every New York City slumlord deserves the same fate. Your little Hasid 
police force, and I tell the ambulances, can't protect you from the real world. There's another quote. It would be a better world if these kidnappers rounded up all the slumlords in New York. Terrible. We are a nation that embraces freedom of speech, but words can do harm sometimes to people. Hateful words, insightful words, derogatory words. If the Holocaust has taught us anything, it is this. We need to condemn hate and hateful speech in its infancy. Today I stand shoulder to shoulder with all of the elected officials, community leaders, to condemn this hate and this hateful speech. May God comfort the family members, the eight, the wife, the eight little children, the youngest of which will never get to know his father. Thank you and God bless. But I want you to know that the community, the whole community of New York City is behind us. And we will do whatever it takes to bring these perpetrators to justice. Feed off our advocate. The advertisement, you gotta have money to advertise. What about us? Each individual never ever buy the New York Post again. all just come together. And when they violated that man, they violated all of us. And we're not going to take it. Now, New Yorkers have seen a lot, but what we've seen today is really uh, beneath all contempt. It's basically complete disregard for human dignity and human life. Essentially, the New York Post is celebrating the death of an innocent victim, an innocent New Yorker, an innocent businessman, an innocent father, an innocent husband on their page. And I think New Yorkers are right to be outraged. And we're thick-skinned New Yorkers. We see a lot. We see a lot of crazy things in the streets and on our papers and in the news. But I don't think we've ever seen anything like this before. And I think that's why you've seen this wide sense of outrage, not just from elected officials, but from community leaders, from civic leaders, and from average New Yorkers who are out there. And I'll tell you that I actually think this is a situation that was actually started by social media. It was really one of the unique things about what we saw today was Twitter and Facebook. You know, in the past, this kind of thing would take to a Monday or a Tuesday until people would talk about it. Instantly, I think people's inboxes, their Twitter feeds, their Facebook messages, it all blew up and people realized that anyone of good conscience would be outraged by this kind of behavior. Well, you I'm a tenant, yes. Okay, can you describe me, you know, what it was like being a tenant of uh, uh, Max? He's great. He's a, he's a great guy. Uh, he's, he's always uh, had a smile on his face. Uh, very happy. I actually got really, really excited to see him every time I saw him. Uh, uh, always had something nice to say, always had a joke. Uh, I uh, mentioned to her that uh, he was always with his brother. His brother also had a really great attitude. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, a how does really it make good you experience also. And how did it make you feel when you uh, read the New York Post this morning and you saw such negative comments about him? Well, I mean, I feel more of uh, a dignity just to how somebody had just died. I mean, not just because I knew the guy, just because uh, a human being can be, you know, referred to by a newspaper. Uh, like that, just and he just died, and he has a family, uh, eight children he left behind, and it's just you know it's really sad to see uh, somebody, especially the media, express itself about somebody that had just died like that. Okay, thank you. And what's your first name? Andres. Uh, can you spell that? A N D R E S. And last name? Escalante. Can you spell that? E S C A L A N T. Okay, thank you very much. Now, do you plan on buying the New York Post or reading it? No way. 
it's not only is it offensive, it's not true. Everything that I read about Max is the opposite of my experience with him. And how many? He's been, besides being a, a really friendly guy and a great landlord, um, you know, he's just probably the best landlord I've ever had. So to be reading that, you know, that he's a slumlord, um, you know, it, it was a mean thing to say about him, but it's also just a lie. Now, do you plan on reading the New York Post uh, from, from now on? Uh, I wouldn't buy it. I would never buy it. So I would get my information elsewhere.